It's Rent a Girlfriend's sixth anniversary today. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Without further ado, we're gonna get into chapter 290. This should be a really interesting chapter because this is coming out around the anniversary. I'm also wearing my Rent a Girlfriend shirt. A lot of people are probably dooming and glooming, but I'm pretty sure this chapter is gonna be wholesome. I'm like 90% sure this chapter is gonna be wholesome. Last time, the next time for it was 20 minutes later, which probably means for this one, this is gonna be 20 minutes after Chizuru went out to talk to Umi and came back. I'm gonna try and find the next times for each individual chapters and mention them by the end of the videos. Also, a lot of you have been asking me in the comments where I am reading this. Look, I have two simple answers for you. One, do the same thing I do and go to K-Manga. Like that's that's what I'm doing. I'm going to K-Manga. I'm paying a dollar for a chapter. I know it's not reasonable to some of you. I don't care because I'm supporting Reiji, so I'm perfectly fine with it. Other than that, if you really want the chapters, go to the go to the subreddit and subscribe to the Discord because I know they have the chapters in the Discord. I'm not promoting anything else. I'm just doing it through shit. I got spoiled on the fucking cut. I spoiled my- How do you spoil yourself on the chapter? Is it because I wasn't fucking ready? Whatever. Let's mosey. Okay. Going out with my girlfriend want none of the fuck? See? What did I say? Except this is interesting. He's looking- he's looking at Minnie and Minnie's like super defensive. Minnie? It's fair. It's fair. Be afraid. But yeah, see? Umi's tall. Umi's fucking tall, dude. I've been saying this for the past few chapters. Umi is, is a tall boy. Anywho. Okay. Yep, and then Kazuya is in his room alone. So this this also tells me it's been 20 minutes later because Kazuya is, is in his room alone. Minnie was with him, meaning Minnie left. Up, oh, he, he's got it pretty bad. I love you, Chizuru Chan. I love you, Chizuru. Ugh. So, I, I gotta preface this. Basically, this is a reference to the birthday arc. The reason it's a reference to the birthday arc is a lot of reasons. Um, For instance, here's the simplest one. How Sumi and how Umi enter Chizuru's home is the complete opposite, intentionally so. Sumi waits outside by the door, just waits for her patiently. She made a plan with Chizuru earlier, but she didn't text her as she was coming. In the opposite sense, Umi barges the fuck into Chizuru's home, and they both try to do the same thing, which is pray at the altar and put up incense. That's literally what they both did. Speaking of which, that also reminded me, notice how we don't actually see Umi pray at the altar? We just kind of skip past that part. Another thing too is notice how when Sumi talks to Chizuru in private, we don't assume anything is wrong, while the way this is presented, we specifically assume something is wrong to the point that the characters actually end up following Chizuru and Umi. In contrast, Sumi never comes off as fishy. Ne there's nothing about her that comes off as fishy, despite her also having feelings for Kazuya. She puts those feelings aside because what matters first is specifically Chizuru's feelings. Umi is essentially that character that causes that insecurity, that makes you feel uncomfortable, that makes you doubt the things you already know to be true because of how he acts. In contrast, Sumi makes you feel comfortable. Both of them had a situation where Minnie was the reason they got into the house. Because for example, Sumi runs into Kazuya and Kazuya thinks he can play it off somehow. Then Minnie gets into the middle of the picture and then Minnie just barges into the home and Kazuya's like, fuck it, I gotta tell Sumi exactly what's going on. On, right? In that same way, that's exactly what happened with Umi. Like, literally both times it's Minnie's fault. And in a way, she's helping, but she's making it worse. Classic Minnie. And I just want to clarify the similarities between these two chapters because the reason I'm mentioning this at all is simply because that arc was about Chizuru finding a sense of agency over her life. And she literally, like, establishes to herself, like, I'm gonna start chasing after that agency without fear. In that same way, this is what this arc is doing for Kazuya's character because now it's about him finding his agency through the family and the people around him, but at the same time, despite that. Death, get out, get out already, get out of my head. Oh, make it stop, my head keeps replaying that entire scenario from yesterday, it's been, what the fuck? So much for 20 minutes later, that was yes, that was a day before. They didn't even talk about it? Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna get a flashback to Minnie talking to Kazuya. I think that's what's gonna happen. That makes a lot of sense. Get any sleep with all this anxiety. Umikun is after Mizuhara, a hot guy like him, and he's already confessed? What kind of cruel joke is this? About that. I mean, that doesn't sound like she was about to reject him. Like she was about to tell him that she has feelings for someone else. But no one knows that for sure, right? Only Mizuhara knows. What if she was gonna say about that? I couldn't be happier. <laughs> he bit his tongue off! <laughs> he bit his fucking tongue off. 
<laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. Jesus, that looks so fucking visceral, too. Jesus Christ. Ah, she could have totally accepted and lived happily ever after. That word... The word choice is way too misleading. Yeah, maybe it started off like a rejection, but it might have ended up with her complete approval. Also, there's one other thing. Yuzohara never told me anything about him confessing. We're getting to that good shit. Okay, I've been, I've been curious about this. I've been curious about how Kazuya feels about this because it's always been about that. If it happened at the barbecue, it was long before I ever did. He even knows the address to this place. Doesn't that prove how far along the relationship is? When we were Hawaiians, and even when she told me she'd do some research, behind closed doors, she had this deep connection with Umikun this entire time? What? Wait, maybe it's the same for all the things we did together. The dying images of past happiness. Dude, this is a job at chapter 218. I, I, I love Reishi Man. I fucking love Reishi Man. No, everything from the past few chapters has been has been references and jabs at chapter 218 and our perception of that chapter. And, it, and, that, and what Reishi has been doing is he's been literally spelling it the fuck out because people do not understand what he was saying in that chapter. I get this is the anniversary and I, sh I should be a lot more happy about it and all, but th th this is literally what he's doing. People just don't understand what he's trying to communicate in... Oh my God. No. No, how could they? So if you're wondering why I just fucking paused, you see this panel right here. This is a panel translated by the official translations. And they translated it wrong. Period. No ifs, buts, or whats. They translated it wrong. But these guys have to stick with the continuity that the volume releases have translated. So they put the wrong fucking translation here because that's what they put. In this scene, she says, you are such a great person. It's about complimenting Kazuya. It is not about Chizuru, okay? The internal conflict Chizuru was going through is about her feelings on the inside, right? But that volume translation makes it about her. It misses the fucking point completely. So I'm sorry if I'm deviating, but that pisses me the fuck off. Okay, I don't usually get very angry. There aren't many things that make me angry. Shitty translations that get fucking publicized it make me fucking mad. This is annoying it, because it's blatantly wrong and it makes Chizuru's character appear fucking childish. You're just so nice to me. What the fuck is that? Chizuru is like this character deeply rooted in, in realism and maturity because she feels like she has to be this way. And then this dude just makes her into a fucking child when we had an entire, the whole point of the birthday arc that we just had recently was about Chizuru accepting her inner fucking child. So when the fucking localizers just be like, hey yo, we're gonna make this line fucking stupid because we want it to be fucking stupid and totally miss the point of like the dialogue because remember when Sayuri was literally telling Chizuru, you are a great person? And then Chizuru literally goes and reflects those words back at fucking Kazuya. She tells him, you're a great person? Yeah, that's the fucking point. That's the fucking point. But no, 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 no. Let's just make it, you're so nice to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to randomly fucking rant about this. I just, I saw this at the, at the side of my eye and I, I had like a visceral gut reaction. Basically, this is what they're doing. They're, they're having every single, even a rental date. Even a rental date. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> Fucking look look at my flip of emotions one second. I'm like viscerally mad. Then I see a stupid joke that just I click with and I'm like, yep, that's pretty good. Vibing with that. <laughs> oh man, poor Kazuya, man. Small animals cowering before the complexity of women. Maybe it's all it's the same for all the things we did together. Maybe she already been through everything with him. No, no way. I can't take this. Oh, get these painful delusions out of my head. The mere thought of this is unbearable. Oh God, okay. I've been playing too much Final Fantasy 16 and they kept making bear bearer puns. So now I just can't unsee this even though it has nothing to do with it. Okay, see, there's the Yamori flashback back to this. I was fucking right. This reminds me of what Yamori-san said yesterday. Well, yeah, that would mean she's been hiding it all this time. But on the other hand, that means she kissed you even after Umi-san confessed to her at Hawaiians, which also suggests she doesn't have feelings for him. 
Besides, she didn't seem all that happy about it. To me, anyway. If anything, I should think you should look at this in a more positive light. Well, she has a point. We all need a friend like Minnie, dude. We all need a friend like Minnie. That's one way to interpret it. It does look like Umikun was the only one to confess his feelings, and she already knows her answer. I get it wouldn't be right for me to ask about it. It's not like I'm her boyfriend. It's possible that she didn't tell me out of kindness so as not to make me worry. That's... Good job, Kazuya. That's in Chizuru's character. But what if it's because she's undecided? Feels guilty about it all. That basically makes me her backup, doesn't it? Oh, Kazuya, no, man. But typically, that's what people call sneaky. No, Kazuya, don't get him into the... Hey, which is it, really? I'm not sure how much more of this I can take. Oh, poor boy. We're building to it. Chizzer's gonna walk in now. Clairvoyance. Mmm. Mmm. Vindication! Knock, knock. Huh? Oh, what? Crap, I gotta tidy up. I yeah? A knock. Is Ian Morrison even here? Sorry, can I come in? Uh, Mizuhara, sh sure. I want to borrow one of my grandma's books to reference for a play. You mind? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, feel free. And there she is. She doesn't know that I heard her talking with Umikun. I wish I could loosen up in front of her, but it's not happening. Oh, I want to ask about Umikun, but there's no way I can do that. I like both the words and the courage. What are you doing? Are you afraid today? What? Uh, oh, I've just been thinking about you nonstop since yesterday. Like hell I can say that. N nothing. Terrible. I see. This is Chizuru. <laughs> this is fucking Chiz- He's reading manga and it's Chizuru. <laughs> that's- That's really funny and goofy at the same time. What- What is this? It looks familiar. Oh, and there's Kazuya's phone. And he's eating Pringles. <laughs> she closes the book. Uh, wait. Why is she staring at me like that? Did I leave that much of a mess? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In so many ways. I'm sorry for being so lazy. Hey. You wanna go out for a bit? Eh? Eh? Uh huh. Go out? Yeah, if you're not busy. I I'm not busy at all. I totally free. Great. I'll be ready in 20 minutes. See you in the front door. Uh, yeah, okay. What? Wait. What? 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 We're going out! Wait. What? Wait. What just happened? Okay, 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 okay. I like this. Really? We're going out? She just asked me out, right? She just asked me out, right? She's her ass to mount. She's her ass to mount, bud. There's like five chapters so far, I'm just saying. Sweat, 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 sweat. <laughs> Is she getting ready now? Inside the house? Are we really going out? The more certain isn't here today, so it's just the two of us, right? But what are we going out for? Changed in such a hurry, but going out can be so many things. For coffee? A walk? Wait, doesn't that make this a date? Nah, no way, for free? It can't be anything like a date. Not a chance! That, that's too good to be true! I love you, Scissors John. Seriously, not a chance. That was a major reality check for me. Umikun's probably surrounded by beautiful women all the time, and someone like him chose her. From the get go, she was completely out of my league. Are we going to the store? Is this just a shopping trip? I'm more than happy to, but I changed my clothes for this. I must be such an idiot. Thanks for waiting. Shall we go? <laughs> I feel that, bud. I feel that, bud. I feel- This reminded me of Denji for some reason, and I love it. This reminded me of Denji, and I love it. Dude, good fucking days. Yo, no, she she dressed out. She's looking nice. She is doing something with Kazuya, dude. They're doing something together. And it's just them. Chizuru is trying. She is taking agency over her life. Yes! I always had bad luck with rain. I hope the weather's okay. It's strange, but it never seems to rain when I go out on dates with you. Yo, that's a subtle way. That's her subtle way of saying she's on a date with him. That's a chrysanthemum. Oh, wow. I understand. I see, Reiji. Okay. 
Language of Flowers. If y'all don't know, Reiji uses the Language of Flowers all the time in his writing. Okay, so cute note. Shizuru actually wore a chrysanthemum brooch during Paradise. Uh, at the start of Paradise, she wore a chrysanthemum brooch. Chrysanthemums in the language of flowers, the basic the basic term for them means noble or nobility, but at the same time, they also have another meaning, which is dependent on the color of the flower. White ones means truth. Red ones means I love you. And then yellow ones means sighted love. Shizuru has a white one on. It could be yellow, it could be some other different color, but either way, it matches the current theme perfectly. In that same way, she was wearing a chrysanthemum in paradise where she was dressed as Kazuya's wife and she had a chrysanthemum brooch that was white on her chest, meaning it was the truth. She was, she was literally wearing the truth. So just things like that, just subtleties like that. Um, for example, even Shizuru's swimsuit, um, when, that she was wearing in paradise. Yeah, I know y'all are fucking horny. Uh, Chizuru's swimsuit that she was wearing in paradise had white lace on it and it had it had a wild rose on it. This is directly correlated to when Kazuya had called Chizuru Venus because this is a reference to the painting called The Birth of Venus. And literally the whole point of that scene was that Chizuru was walking into the water just like Venus was born from water and it's about rebirth. There's constant references like that throughout the series. Just kind of wanted to toss that out here uh, because that's literally what's going on here. Chizuru, like there's an emphasis on Chizuru's face here and, and then there's an emphasis on the earrings and the way that she's dressed. He, he put a lot of work in this, hot damn. Like good. I, I, I love this, I love this like close up where it like zooms in, it like zooms in on Chizuru's face. That's so good. I'll try to make like a mini first impressions of this chapter. Um, I won't cover everything I want to, but I think this is a good way for me to get into some stuff about Chizuru's character. But yeah, it's strange, but I never, it never seems to rain when I'm, I'm, I'm going out with a date with you. Damn, that's it. That settles it. It's a date. We're going on a date. Hey, come on. What are you doing? You're just standing there and staring. Sorry, c coming. Ah, uh, dude, it begins. Yo, their new journey begins. This is what this chapter feels like. Oh, them just walking at the end like that. Their new journey begins. That's so good. That's so good. Ah, oh, their new journey begins. And it's done on the sixth anniversary. 10 out of 10 chapter. Y'all can't tell me shit. This is a 10 out of 10 chapter. It's perfectly executed, perfect buildup, directly ties back to the last chapter. Reasons with Kazuya instead of just giving into the emotions, which is exactly the whole point of Minnie's character is to provide reason and perspective. Uh, the way the chapter is utilized and executed, the way it's paced, the, the like this, you know this is coming, but the way it's executed makes it feel so genuine and heartfelt. And it also feels so natural. It, uh, oh yeah, this is, holy shit, this is the bag Shizuru wore when she went to Kazuya's house, like right after season one ended. And then Shizuru is dressed exactly like how Minnie describes. She's dressed for a day. This is, she's dressed for a day. There's no other way to interpret this. She's dressed for a day. Like she's all fashioned out. If they were just going out to have fun, she wouldn't dress this nicely. She's dressed for a day. Like th that's the subtle language of this. Uh, another thing too, she's wearing a ribbon. And and yeah, I get it. You guys are like, what the fuck a ribbon? Yeah, the, the ribbon is basically supposed to be just like a, a nice way to tie it off. But at the same way, ribbons are also the thing that tie them together because these two characters constantly question if their relationship is fate. Ribbons are representative of fate, oftentimes, more often than not, and Shizuru often wears ribbon. But at the same time, like, another thing I kind of want to describe is like, there's actually no fate in this story. That's what's interesting, is like, Reiji, Reiji's writings and themes always take this middle ground where there's no uh, big, like, there's no fate in this story. It's just a matter of coincidences and patterns that we use, that we follow, but it's the passion behind them. It's, it's this idea of, is there fate? You you wonder to yourself, is that's the question. It's just, it just simply asks, is there fate? But it doesn't say there is. It doesn't tell you there's fate. If anything, this, the other story Reiji's writing, the Shiyunji family, is more so just like, no, 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 no. These characters' lines are set in stone. They can't do fucking anything about it. Like, it, 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 he literally starts the series by saying it's their destiny. This is a story that actually really questions what is love, what is life, what are our choices, what, like what are the things that we do in our lives. And, and the Shiyunji family is the complete opposite. Hey, this is me from the future video. I've, I'm already, I've already recorded chapter 291. I'm gonna put that out the same day today. Don't you worry about that. But I just kind of want to point out that I didn't make this video for last week. 
uh, for chapter 290. So I'm just gonna put that out here. You'll notice I have a big fucking beard and shit. Uh, but I'll be putting these videos out at the same time. So yeah, uh, if you're worried, hey, why, why'd you put this one out first? I'm gonna put both out. Don't worry about that. So yeah, the, all, all's good. If you guys did enjoy this video, please subscribe, hit the like button and the bell icon, keep up with the uploads and all of that shenanigans. And I will see you in chapter 291, maybe in a few hours or so. I've been Fate, and remember, it's most. Awesome.